Hello, everybody. I'm Ricky Smith, and this is Faith on Friday Presents. At Faith on Friday Presents, we're all about highlighting inspiring people, engaging topics, and small businesses. And don't forget, while you're here, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share us with your network. Okay, so we are all doing it. We are on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, Pinterest, everywhere. And we are looking at content, looking for content, and wondering what makes this content so good. Well, today I'm going to introduce you to somebody who is the content queen. Don't play with me, okay? Because I don't mess around. Her name is Tamara Hamilton, and she is going to tell us everything about content and content creation. Y'all say hello to my friend Tamara. Hi, Tamara. How are you? Hi, I'm well. How are you? Hi, everybody. <laughs> I'm doing good, thank you. But girl, there is so much involved in this topic. So first of all, tell me a little bit about you, what you do, and where you are. I am in southeastern Wisconsin, born and raised. I am on the journey to 50. I've got two adult children, two beautiful, I mean, the most absolute beautiful, both inside and out grandchildren who are the absolute loves of my life. I uh, started in marketing fresh out of high school at the age of 18. So I've done it for more than half of my life. I always say you cut me open and marketing just pours <laughs> out. And I've been fortunate enough to both have the audience and develop and cultivate the audience that accepts that part of mm -hmm. me because I only present myself authentically. Um, I love tacos. Tacos are my favorite food, okay. um, but I don't mess around with everybody's tacos now because not everybody, you know, like everybody, get, first everybody, of all, everybody can't do a taco. Right. Everybody can't make tacos. They think they can, but they can't. Right. But you're in Wisconsin, uh, girl. Where you will find a good taco in Wisconsin? Because, you know, I'm in El Paso. So, girl, we don't play when it comes to our Taco Tuesday. You would be surprised. We actually have. I've always grown up around Latinas, and mm -hmm. there are some great Mexican restaurants in okay. southeastern Wisconsin. You would really be surprised. In fact, I'm, I'm from already. a smaller little community, less than 100,000 people. Mm -hmm. But, you know, our tacos are be some of the best that I've had. Okay, in the country. Now, I know El Paso. I know we on, talk don't in play. History. That's yeah. right. Because you <laughs> on the gauntlet and I got 60 people right now going, oh, no, ma'am. No, ma'am. So we're, <laughs> we're probably coming for you. I just need you to know. So talk to us about this content creation, because we're on the Internet all day, every platform all over the time. So what makes content so important when it comes to marketing? Content is so important when it comes to marketing because there are gen we are in the middle of one of the biggest generational shifts, right? Mm -hmm. 10, 15, 20, 25, even 30 years ago, everyone was concerned with marketing to millennials, right? Mm -hmm. Now, sure. boomers, Gen X, and elder millennials, and millennials, mm -hmm. and zennials are all still relevant, but we're coming to the point in time where Gen Z mm -hmm. is coming into their own and they are a very large generation mm -hmm. and they just have they're they're completely different than especially like your boomers right mm -hmm. and then as you you know go up in age further distance from them you're going to okay. see a lot of different um shifts right and so mm -hmm. one of the big things is they don't like traditional advertising they yeah. don't like advertised in the traditional way. I think number mm -hmm. one, they find it boring, like yawn, like, you know, impress me. It <laughs> mm -hmm. doesn't impress me. Right. Um, they're also a lot more socially conscious. They just, mm. they have a completely different mindset and the way that you reach them sure. is going to be different. So are television ads, radio ads still relevant today? Yes. Mm -hmm. Will they always be relevant? I don't know, but I think they will be for quite some time. Okay. However, as your depending on the type of business and industry that you're in, mm -hmm. you you may find that your numbers are getting smaller and smaller as that population ages, mm -hmm. unfortunately passes away sure. and faces different things financially, right? Mm -hmm. And so depending on, you know, like, are you just, is your business going to die when you die? Or if you're trying to create something for the longer term, you're going to mm -hmm. want to learn how to figure out 
and market to Gen Z. Now, yeah. with that said, it ain't for all of us to market to Gen Z. However, mm. it still will help us to learn how to get into the content game because we're still competing for space and attention on mm -hmm. the same platforms that are right. dominated by yeah. Gen Z, TikTok yeah. in particular. Anywhere True. where a short form video, where hello, where a short form video is not important mm -hmm. in 2023. So content is a great way to market mm -hmm. without being that traditional, you know, very regimented, basically the yeah. way I learned Oh, you know, 30 years ago, that <laughs> stuff don't work anymore. You know, we have no. to be a lot different. It's a lot more yeah. about relationships That's so and true. about the way you create that relationship online mm -hmm. is through mm -hmm. content. And that includes yeah. being your authentic self, branding yourself and mm -hmm. showing a day in your life. Like one of the mm -hmm. big things that's training in short form video is what I eat in a day. I right? know, but <laughs> I'm, I guess I'm of that generation. I don't care what you eating. Now, I do like pictures of food because I like mm -hmm. to cook. I like good food. I love beautiful presentation. But maybe I'm of that generation that says, baby mm -hmm. girl, I don't care that you're eating this again. It's 345 in the <laughs> afternoon and uh, this is what you're showing me. So though content is important and though whom you're building it for is necessary, how do you know mm -hmm. what good content looks like? You know what good content looks like? I love this question. <laughs> is you need to first know who it is that you're serving, right? Who are you aiming to get your content in front of and mm -hmm. hold your attention? Because mm -hmm. part of your responsibility as a marketer is to know who it is that you serve and how you serve them. Mm -hmm. And a good way to do that is by creating engaging content and yeah. asking them, giving them input. People love, everybody has an opinion, right? Well, People love to have an opinion. So you give them the opportunity to have some input, pay mm -hmm. attention to your insights and your analytics. That's mm -hmm. another good way. And having good old conversation oh. with your ideal client. Both Conversations, you know, I beg your pardon. Conversation, girl. Well, you're still you know, doing that? <laughs> Yeah. You know, the, I'm a big fan of conversational content mm -hmm. for this reason. As, as And number two, I would say is definitely paying attention to your analytics and your mm -hmm. insights and knowing when is your ideal client online? Mm -hmm. What types of content do they interact with? You know, it, it, a great thing to do is if you have a Facebook group, that's nothing but a focus group. You can yeah. watch your ideal client in their natural habitat. <laughs> I love it. Social media, right? <laughs> right. In their natural habitat. Right. Because we are, we're, we're looking, we're scrolling. Some of, depending on what you're looking for, will depend on what you find. So mm -hmm. now trending, because you said earlier, TikTok, of course, is trending. I, mm -hmm. Here's my thing. Are people sleeping on Pinterest? I'm a, a fan. A <laughs> We could do a whole thing on Pinterest. Really? I, mean, I made good money with Pinterest last year. Let me tell you. What? Pinterest, yeah, yeah, yeah. Pinterest has been one of my fastest growing platforms mm -hmm. since 2019. I had 3 million views on Pinterest at one point. Okay. So what Pinterest, people are definitely sleeping on it. Mm -hmm. Pinterest, it, the, okay. Calm down, Tamara. I know. Bring it in, sis. Let's get Bring this it in, together. Okay? <laughs> so, okay. So a couple of things. When we talk about trends, let's mm -hmm. talk about you said TikTok. I like to not think about it content platform specific, right? No, okay. I like to think about content in terms of longevity, the shelf life mm. of okay. that content, right? Okay. And so I also like to think of maximizing both my efforts and the attention, okay? Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. when I say maximize the attention, I like to be om omnipresent. Not everyone sure. can be on multiple platforms. Now that doesn't mean I live on all these different platforms, right. but it does mean I have a plan in place to get my content on all of these platforms mm -hmm. to maximize that reach attention, mm -hmm. as well as not have to create different content for all of right. these different platforms. Mm -hmm. And one of the greatest ways to do that, because remember a couple of years ago, you had to create different dimensions and sizes. Oh my gosh. Of all of these platforms. Yes. And it lives gave me anxiety, right? Mm -hmm. So in today's <laughs> world, it's all about the size of your phone screen, right? And that yeah. is short form video. So mm -hmm. I would say instead of TikTok, mm -hmm. I would say 
short form video because here's the reality. Mm. Montana is trying to ban TikTok. The everybody's trying to ban TikTok, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. And so when we talk about content, we have to remember we don't own these social media platforms. Right. So it's very 100%. important to do a couple things. Number mm. one, we need to be collecting leads and we need to be getting those leads and having conversation off of the platform. Mm. And that means you know, especially if you're only on like Mark Zuckerberg's platforms, being right. Instagram, Facebook, WhatsApp, mm -hmm. not those. You need to move them to Telegram. You need to move them wow. to a text message service and build your email list because mm -hmm. whatever happens with these platforms, whether they go down for a day, and, you know, these platforms go down, we still need to be able to contact our email list. We still yeah. need to be able to send content to them. So that's one thing. The mm -hmm. other thing is to be a, a, on other platforms. So like I said, I'm not active on Pinterest all day, every day. However, right, right. I'm there enough that if Facebook goes kaput, if TikTok mm -hmm. goes kaput, I can put more focus and attention into what I've got yeah. over on Pinterest, which by the way, I think I have like 12,000 followers on oh my Pinterest. Gosh. That's insane. Exactly. I mean, you know, yeah. and, but it's crazy because folks think of, you know, if you're on Facebook, if you're on Twitter, you're you're good and TikTok. And those, like you said, these things, they they're there's some trouble of brewing. There's some things, there's some people boycotting various things, and things are trying to get out, you know, pull off yeah. the platforms. So if those are the only platforms you're on, you're gonna miss a whole audience, or one day, Lord forbid. You're going to miss all your people because if that's all you have. So it's kind of like diversifying, not just your brand, but your money exactly. and your content and your reach. So exactly. if you're only on these three things, you could be missing out. Exactly. Huh. So, exactly. And But here's another thing, because you mentioned about anxiety, about all these things. I know I did when, when I first got on and I was started on Facebook, like many small business owners did. Mm -hmm. And then we moved from Facebook to LinkedIn, to Twitter, to Instagram, to, 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 now same thing. I'm on all these platforms, but the anxiety comes in like, oh gosh, do I have to do another video? Now what, you know, how do you answer people who are like, I'm on all these platforms, but holy cow, I just ain't got time to do another right, video. Right, right. It's, it's a valid, valid point, a valid question. Mm -hmm. And my answer to that, I already kind of alluded to it, mm -hmm. is having a strategy to reshare and repurpose content. Mm -hmm. If you look at Gary Vaynerchuk and what he does, mm -hmm. he's Gary V on Instagram and he has, you know, all these followers on yeah. YouTube, which is where he started. Mm -hmm. He is the content, right? And that's what I always tell people. You are the content, you are the brand, you yeah. are the algorithm, believe it or not. You Ugh. are the algorithm, literally, mm -hmm. okay? And so when you understand that you are the content, mm -hmm. you can, like this video that's being recorded with us right now, Right. what can be done from this video is it can be broken down into 15 second clips. Mm -hmm. It can be broken down into eight second clips, right? right. So for one interview that's 30 minutes long, 45 minutes long, you've mm -hmm. got almost infinite number of pieces of content that mm -hmm. can come from that. And then you can use those shorter form pieces of content to drive traffic to the longer form piece of content, which mm -hmm. is going to help you out on YouTube and even Facebook. And right. then you can also increase your audience and your reach and attract new viewers, new mm -hmm. followers, new subscribers, new leads by getting that content on places like TikTok, wow. on Pinterest. Yes. Mm -hmm. that is you know, one of my mentors, she did an, a podcast interview with somebody who made $25,000 from Pinterest, mm -hmm. you know, but by collecting wow. leads on Pinterest. Yeah. Right. And see, and right. I love Pinterest, but I love Pinterest for hors d'oeuvres ideas and mm -hmm. decorating ideas. So it's interesting to hear, and I'm sure a lot of people watching this have, have Pinterest boards. We have lots of mm -hmm. boards and we can make money on our Pinterest boards. Oh yeah, we yeah, are I think on people Pinterest, have abandoned Pinterest because they did so. Your Facebook mm -hmm. audience is gonna be a little weird. I hate to use that word and y'all please don't, don't disconnect from us and <laughs> stop watching. But Facebook, your Facebook audience, especially like I'm 49, right? Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. My organic audience on Facebook, they've tried Instagram, they didn't get it, so they stuck to Facebook. They've tried mm. Pinterest, they didn't get it, so they stuck wow. to um to Facebook. So mm-hmm. here's what mm-hmm. I do on Pinterest. On Pinterest, on TikTok, mm-hmm. I'm not going for the same audience that I have on Facebook. I'm right. going for a little bit younger audience. I'm going mm-hmm. for a different audience mm-hmm. on each of the different platforms. And how right. I do that is the SEO. I do okay. that through the hashtags. I do mm-hmm. that through the content itself. Mm-hmm. And then because my Facebook group, my Facebook audience is the one that I have the closest relationship with. Mm-hmm. I can still share pieces of me with that audience on Facebook that just makes right. them love me that much more. Yeah, and, and really, and really honestly, what's not to love. But let me ask you this. So with what you're doing, like I said, making that kind of money on Pinterest, on you know, keeping your audience engaged, how can a small business get involved because you you look at now all these businesses they have their business page they have this and they're not really making money off their business page they I don't even know if anybody's really collecting leads as opposed to just let's engage our audience can a small business look at Pinterest and go huh there's an opportunity and how would they do that how they would do that is they would first develop the content strategy And so that's going to begin with assessing your competition. What Mm -hmm. are they doing? Are they even on Pinterest? And please know that just because they're not on Pinterest doesn't mean they shouldn't be, that you shouldn't be, and that Mm -hmm. you can't be, okay? Mm -hmm. So you work with somebody like me to come up with the strategy to, number one, drive, where are we going to drive the traffic? Mm -hmm. How are we going to collect the leads? What are we going to entice them with? And then how are we going to escalate them, move them through what's called the buyer's journey. And that's what a lot of small businesses are actually missing Mm -hmm. is they want to go on social media and sell, 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 sell. And social media is not really a selling platform. Your Mm -hmm. email list that everybody keeps saying email is dead. You Mm -hmm. have a much like you have like a five times greater chance Mm -hmm. of actually selling to somebody on your email list versus from a social media post. So The reason that I like to tell people it all really works together. And that's what I really help people do. Like I know people who are really good and they set up Mm -hmm. systems Mm -hmm. and they can help you get set up your text messaging and, and I let them do that because I I don't (laughs) like the technical stuff. Can I do it once I've done it and figured it out like Rubik's cube, I'm bored with it. Okay. So I don't really get into that, but what I can help you with is I can help you with writing the email sequence to take care because, you know, a lot mm-hmm. of people collect leads, but they don't nurture them. So we got to yeah. nurture. Yeah, we got to nurture those leads, right? Mm-hmm. We got we to gotta hit them so many times in the first 30 days. And we got to yeah. hit them with a strategy and with the right content. And mm-hmm. so we have to then figure out, okay, now that we're going to collect these leads, we know what lead magnet, what supporting content are we going to create to keep them mm-hmm. coming back? Mm-hmm. Because we need them keep coming back to our blog, to our website, because most sales are not made on the first visit, right? Of course not. Yeah. Yeah. So we got to keep them coming back to increase the probability. And then we work on the, on the conversion. Right. And so there's all these different steps. And Mm -hmm. a lot of people just think of social media as sell, 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 sell. First of all, you your existing customers on social media, right? Mm -hmm. They're going to be your best advocate because part of the customer buyer journey is ascending them Mm -hmm. from being a stranger on the internet all mm-hmm. the way to being a advocate, being a net promoter for you. And right. if you have it set up, becoming an affiliate or joining your team, mm-hmm. if you're in network marketing or direct sales, for example, right? right? Wow. So there's a very regimented process. Mm-hmm. And it's that. so interesting. You, you know, I mean, you're saying all this stuff and a lot of folks either have never heard this before or mm-hmm. definitely don't know how to do it. So I'm going to ask you, Tamara, if somebody wanted to work with you, where in the world should they find you? They can reach me at Tamara S. Hamilton at gmail.com mm-hmm. and or visit my Facebook uh, business page, Tamara S. Hamilton Digital Marketing Agency. And we can book a 10, 15 minute consult mm-hmm. and see, you know, if it's a good fit and what we should do next, what the next steps would be. 
mm-hmm. in terms of helping you get your content strategy and plan together. <laughs> I love it. Y'all, don't worry. If y'all did not get any of that, all of her contact information is going to be in the description below. And I'm going to strongly suggest you hit her up. But for those of you all who are watching, if you or someone you know has an inspiring story, a topic we have to talk about, or a small business that needs to be highlighted, go over to our website at faithonfriday.com and send us an email. We want to hear from you. Tamara, my friend, before I let you go, (laughs) we got to play a game. (laughs) Okay. Okay. Shall so this we play any game? Shall we? Oh, you just told on yourself. Anybody that didn't get that <laughs> reference, you can't be friends with us. I'm just saying. <laughs> come on so now, Ricky. Th- come on. You know, we told that out. So this game is called This or That. It's pretty simple. I'm going to okay. give you the choice of two things. And you off the top of your head, my friend, just tell me which one you like the best. Are you ready to play? I am ready to play. Here we go. Coffee or tea? Oh, uh, tea. Prince or Michael Jackson? Oh, I mean, Prince, the little purple man. I do love me some Michael Jackson, but Prince all day, every day. All right. I still mourn him. Oh my gosh. My condolences, yeah. girl. I ain't mad. Work from home or go to the office? Oh, work from home, baby. <laughs> I'm allergic Romance- to that other stuff. Yeah, I'm, girl, me and you both. Romantic. Mm-hmm or action adventure action adventure okay fight flight or freeze depends on the foe that is so good that is so good that is a great (laughs) answer it really is okay do it yourself or hire a professional hire a professional I believe in doing what you do best and it 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 it's the best dollar spent to hire the, the people who are best at what they do to do it for you. That is so my mantra, girl. That is so my mantra. Okay. Bite your tongue or clap back? Ooh, I wish it was bite your tongue, but clap back. I'm going to clap back somehow. I, I just am. <laughs> I this just mouth. love that about mm-hmm. you. What you yeah. say? We're going to pray for your mouth. We yeah, will. pray for my mouth. Okay. Really, my facial expressions, because that's what's going to tell the truth in a, in a heartbeat. That's oh, a whole girl, other episode. No girl. poker face. <laughs> okay. Large mm-hmm. crowds or small groups? Small groups, for sure. Very introverted. I'm sorry, what? <laughs> I am definitely an introvert, yes. <laughs> small I'm going to just leave that right there, because we're going to talk about that later. Okay. Okay, we're going to talk about that later. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Slow dance or shake that thing? Slow dance. Mm. In peanut butter, crunchy or creamy? Creamy. Mm. Every now and then I like a little crunch, but with my peanut butter, my almond butter, I prefer smooth. Okay. And if you were an animal, what would you be and why? The tiger is my spirit animal. (laughs) Okay. I hate to admit this publicly, but the whole stalk and ambush thing. We have so much to deal with with you, girl. So much to deal with. <laughs> no, seriously, the tiger is such a beautiful big cat. And, mm-hmm. you know, no two tigers have the same stripes. And I don't know. I've just been in love with that animal since I was a little girl. But yeah, wow. the tiger I, in the I bush. Love I, love, I love tigers. Yeah, I'm, I'm still working on the stalking and ambush thing. We'll talk about that later. I don't, I'm not saying I actually stalk people. Look, I'm not judging. I'm just saying <laughs> I'm saying more so back to that fight or flight thing. A lot of people throughout my life kind of take me as a punk. And then mm. wow. they, then I have to emerge from the, from the bush. And let and them let fools them know. Mm. Yeah. I feel that I, I feel. A yeah. All right. Tamara, yeah. thanks so much for joining me today. I appreciate it. It's been so much fun. It, oh, you knew it was going to be. I knew it was going to be. So did Thank I, you actually. for having me. All right, y'all, that's it for this time. But don't worry, we'll be back with more Faith on Friday Presents.